Good morning, everybody. So we learned about some wicked dudes in our reading today, didn't we? <laughs> Welcome. This is Denise Pass with Seeing Deep Ministries, and you're part of our Bible reading today. So thank you for coming. This is where we see deep in a shallow world, and we overcome the battles of the mind with the Word of God. And today we're reading from 2 Kings chapters 21 through 25, and what a riveting read. I know sometimes when we read um, different books of the Bible in the Old Testament, it can feel like, ugh, let me guess, let me guess, someone was wicked, <laughs> they didn't follow God, and disaster happened, and then they repented. So yes, there are similar themes, but there's always something that we can learn from it. So good morning, Diane. Uh, so we have much to learn, and one thing is don't live like a king. Okay, I'm just going to say that right now. But what not to do, for sure, and what to do. We can learn a lot from what they did. So a quick overview of today's reading. In 2 Kings 21, we read about Judah's King Manasseh and King Amon. In chapters 22 to 23, we learn about Judah's King Josiah's reign and the reforms he made, along with a couple more kings in Judah, Jehoahaz and Jehoiakim. In chapter 24, Jehoiakim's rebellion and deportation to Babylon happens. And then we end today's reading with Nebuchadnezzar's siege of Jerusalem. And so the Bible reading of the day, again, 2 Kings 21 through 25. So reading from 2 Kings 21 verses 1 and 2, it says, Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem 55 years. His mother was, and this is an interesting name, Hephzibah. Now, I thought it was kind of intriguing that a lot of these kings, they said the mama's name. Hey, yay for mamas. High five. We get a little call out here. <laughs> but verse 2, he did what was evil in the Lord's sight, following the detestable practices of the pagan nations that the Lord had driven from the land ahead of the Israelites. Okay, y'all, this king was 12 years old, 12 when he started. You know, sometimes I think about how kids are being raised today and a lot of times playing video games right out of the womb, you know? They're not really prepared for life by that. But at age 12 to be a king, and it turns out he wasn't a great one, right? He was a wicked one. But it doesn't compare with Josiah, who was eight years old when he started as a king. Uh, it's a different time and culture for sure. But notice why God was displeased and what was evil about King Manasseh? He followed the detestable practices of the pagan nation. So don't live like a king. Don't follow the culture. We've talked about that some here recently because that happens to be what was in the scriptures we were reading. But I see it more now than ever. I think once you're over 50 years old, <laughs> everything kind of comes together. And it's like, oh man. We just see what this culture around us is doing and how much we've got to represent Christ well. So the culture around us is pervasive with anti-God messages. And if we don't resist these messages, guess what? We're going to be carried away by them. So don't live like a king and don't serve idols. Manasseh's son, King Amon, wasn't any better than dad. 2 Kings 21.20 says he did what was evil in the Lord's sight, just as his father Manasseh had done. He followed the example of his father, worshiping the same idols his father had worshipped. He abandoned the Lord, the God of, this, of his ancestors, and he refused to follow the Lord's ways. Those are strong words, refused. Kings imitated the culture around them and influenced kings who followed, but we can decide to be counter culture but you know it's gonna be hard and you know when I'm reading this right now and I'm thinking how a lot of the kings that mentioned the mama okay so I'm gonna give a little shout out to the mamas right now this is gonna be the biggest challenge we have teaching our kids to avoid sin to overcome sin scripture talks about sin wants to master us but we must master it and so I think a lot of what we do as moms is try to teach our kids to follow 
Christ, obviously, but how to battle against sin. Because sin is deceptive, our own hearts are deceptive, it is extremely difficult. And so my kids will tell you, I went to a lot of radical measures to keep them from sin, and sometimes it bugged them. And it's like, good grief. You know, and I was accused of, um, oh, what is it, uh, overprotecting, sheltering. Uh, my kids thank me for that now. You see, there's a, a sheltering, a protecting that we need to do as moms while they are young so that they are equipped with wisdom so that when they go out into the world, they can handle it. Otherwise, and look, these kings were 12 and some are 8. Otherwise, they might not know how to resist sin, might not know how to uh, handle the influences in our life because our flesh wants to follow wickedness. That's the natural and it stinks. But if we're aware of it, then we can train our kids to be able to handle it. So uh, I won't get into any of the stories, but let's just say I've been a radical mama. <laughs> so we have to choose who we want to imitate right? We are all imitating someone or something. Influences are all around us. God's word is an influence. The culture is a word. Is an is influence. The people around us are an influence. In 1 Corinthians 1 11, Paul said, and you should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Ultimately, this is who we want to imitate. And Christ lived a perfect example so we would know how we should live. And so we have that before us, but we also have the Holy Spirit to enable us. But friends, not only do we need to not imitate the wicked culture around us, but we need to set an example for the believers and for the culture around us. I used to tell my children when they were little that it was not just the avoidance of evil, but the example of righteousness they needed to set. And that was gonna be hard. Because people made fun of us, okay? You know, like, oh, you don't watch this movie. You don't do sleepovers. Like, what is y'all's problem? Y'all be weird. <laughs> well, we wanted to be righteous. And you know what? Not self-righteous. I'm going to say that right now. Because there's nothing good in us except for Christ Jesus. Firmly believe that. But we're still called to be this influence by the grace of God. And so King Josiah would be a king worth imitating, right? So, so far I've said, don't live like a king, serving idols, serving self, following the culture. But this king was worth imitating. And he imitated King David. 2 Kings 22, 2 says, He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight and followed the example of his ancestor David. He did not turn away from doing what was right. Oh, man, those are beautiful words. Don't we wish that would be the case for everybody? I want everybody to get to heaven. I want everybody to imitate Jesus. But, man, do we get pulled away so easily. Let God's word be the biggest influence in your life. 2 Kings 22, verse 8, 11 through 13 says, Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan, the court Secretary, that's a cool name for back then, right? Shaphan. <laughs> anyway, I have found the book of the law in the Lord's temple. Then Hilkiah gave the scroll to Shaphan and he read it. When the king heard what was written in the book of the law, he tore his clothes in despair. Then he gave these orders to Hilkiah the priest, Ahikam son of Shaphan, and Akbor son of Mekiah, Shaphan the court secretary, and Asiah the king's personal advisor. Man, those are some names. Go to the temple and speak to the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah. Inquire about the words written in the scroll that has been found. What I love about this response is first off, it's immediate obedience, immediate sorrow for sin, tearing his robes. And then what does he do? He steps into action. You see, influence is one thing to say, I believe in Jesus, but it's another thing to say, I believe God's word is true, 100% true, and I'm gonna live by it. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna act accordingly. And so I'm gonna do things that are gonna bring about the kingdom of God here on earth, right? We pray that, the Lord's Prayer, a lot of people know that. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What are we doing to help make that happen? 
So Josiah then made reforms in accordance with the influence of the Word of God that it had on him. And you see, it's not just enough to say we believe. We act according to that belief. Josiah tore down altars in high places used for idolatry and spiritual adultery. And he reinstituted the celebration of Passover and a bunch of other things. Medium, spiritist, goodbye. You know, and, and he wasn't politically correct about it. Can I just say that? Oh my goodness. Guys, we've got to wake up. We've got to realize that we are called to another kingdom. We live for Jesus Christ. And so he's our biggest influence. And so therefore, uh, if the world around me doesn't agree with reading the Bible, it doesn't matter. If they're saying you can't talk about this or that because someone might be offended, I answer to Jesus. King Jesus. He's the king I want to imitate. Amen? So, friends, we might feel like our culture is too far gone. I know we live in discouraging times. But God is asking us if we will be like King Josiah and, more importantly, like King Jesus today. Will we influence our culture more than it influences us? Will we imitate Christ? The scripture of the day is from 2 Kings, and this is uh, verse 23 and 25. It says, I'm sorry, chapter 23, verse 25. Never before had there been a king like Josiah, who turned to the Lord with all his heart and soul and strength, obeying all the laws of Moses. And there has never been a king like him since. May we live so radically different that people are saying, what is it about you? But not in a way of self-righteousness, not in a way of uh, trying to judge others, no. In a way of making it so attractive. Man, why would I ever want to follow the influence of worldliness that destroys us? Let's follow Jesus. So such a consequence there was, though, from turning from the Lord we see in all the reading today. And who follows King Josiah but King Jehoiakim? And we know he did what was wicked in the eyes of the Lord. And therefore, we see Jerusalem destroyed. King Nebuchadnezzar comes and they are taken away. Such a consequence, friends. You know, we, we can live in such a way right now that we make a difference in this culture. You know, you might say, come on, Denise, I'm just a house, sitting at home in my house every day. I'm just a mom, or I'm just a kid, or I'm just a whoever you are. You're just a child of God, sent on mission by Jesus Christ. That's who you are. And so you can be influenced, and this will help fuel your mission or defeat your mission. And so if you want to sit around and watch movies all the time, you want to play video games and numb yourself to this life while the life is speeding on by, that's not a good choice. But if you want to hunger after God's word and say, God, here I am, send me, it'll be the most exciting adventure of your life. So you guys, uh, I guess the main application that I come away with is, man, there's lots of people who don't live for Jesus, right? But the ones who do, they can also imitate. They can influence the culture. Let's be influencers of our culture who are following after Christ hard. Don't compromise. Don't give in. Resist evil. Resist the devil and what? He'll flee from you. So you guys, uh, thanks for being in the Word with me today. And Lord willing, go, go with God. I, I always say that. That's part of what I like to say. Go with God. And Lord will, we'll catch you tomorrow.